Is Biden repeating Obama's mistake on Israel? Events in Israel this week are eerily similar to what occurred in the summer of 2014. Then, the Iranian regime, buoyed by its engagements with the Obama administration, empowered and encouraged its proxy Hamas to attack Israel from Gaza so it could gauge the U.S. response. Iran must have been delighted by what transpired. After Israel used the war reserve stockpile ammunition Israel for resupply during the fighting, President Barack Obama was so enraged by the Jewish state's audacity in defending itself that he instructed the state and defense departments to instate an extra round of bureaucratic review on an urgent Israeli request for additional Hellfire missiles. The message to the world could not have been clearer. The Obama administration would not act as a guarantor of Israel's security, but rather as an impediment to Israel's obligation to protect its citizens. Startled and alarmed, Israel attempted the de-escalation demanded by President Obama and then Secretary of State John Kerry, leaving Hamas bloodied but still intact to plot future offenses. The incident convinced Tehran that they had their desired negotiating partners and the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA, was agreed to shortly thereafter on terms highly favorable to the Iranians. This unfortunate episode is now replaying in Israel as the new Biden administration returns to the failed policies that fueled the violence in 2014, such as creating a moral equivalence between Israeli and Palestinian actions, providing unconditional aid to the Palestinians, and attempting a rapprochement with Tehran at Israel's expense. This approach leaves Israel uncertain of the alliance, provides Palestinian elements with sustenance, and gives the Iranian regime the impression that they have a pass to attack America's allies with impunity. In short, in just 100 days the Biden administration has completely undermined the extended period of relative calm and expanding peace under President Donald Trump.